Hello, CIT 100 students. This is a companion video to Computer Fundamentals, CIT 100. We are working in Chunk 2 Operating Systems, and this is a video for Module 2, Growing Digital Trees. This is a companion video to Module 1, where we created our file trees from scratch. The purpose of this module is to familiarize you with a few different tools. The first is we want to be comfortable unpacking or unzipping existing file trees. This is a useful skill because it's often the case that you are given a zipped directory and you want to get at the files inside of it. And we want to understand what's actually going on. And second, we're going to get a chance to work in the Windows command prompt, which will seem like a flashback to the 90s when computers were primarily navigated with only the keyboard. This, by the way, will be the only exercise that I'm going to ask you to navigate using the command prompt. I want you to be familiar with it because it's, it's a way to understand exactly how the operating system works with files. We're going to be very deliberate about that. This video is going to walk through the steps in exercise 1 and exercise 2 of this module. And I encourage you, if you're watching this video, to pause it and do this work along with me. That way my explanations will make more sense and I think it will actually take less time to do it with me than if you watched and tried to remember everything and then did it on your own. So, step number one, if we jump in here, we want to have a CIT100 folder. Remember, folder and directories are exactly the same thing. Um, I'm going to delete my existing uh, directory so that Everything I do is fresh for you. I'm in the Documents folder. So the Documents folder is unique to my user in Microsoft Windows. So my user's name is Eric D. Surprise. And my Documents folder has several existing directories at the top and files underneath it. I'm going to make a CIT100 folder by right-clicking. That opens up the context menu, going to New, and then Folder. And we're going to call it CIT100. And... Notice I made the directory, now I'm going to double click to navigate into it. So I can see where I am. When I say where I am, I am using a program that shows us a view of only one directory at a time. And the directory that I'm viewing is uh, named by its location in the computer's file tree. You'll see that in Microsoft Windows these days, they give you a, a uh, sanitized version of your computer's file tree without the slashes. They don't want to scare people with slashes, but we're not going to be scared with slashes because we know what they mean now. The way I can see the uh, technical s structure is by clicking on the right of that friendly structure. So I'm viewing a directory that's root is the C drive. That's a map to a hard drive. Inside that is a directory called users. Inside that is Eric D. Inside that is documents. Inside that is CIT100. And because that's the last item in our path, that is what I'm viewing down here. I'm going to teach you a shortcut. I want to make a directory. This is step number... Oh, let's do step number... Uh, let's do step number two. Okay, so uh, once, uh, we're going to open this shared link to view the existing file trees. This is cool. This is like our digital forest. So I've had students making file trees for a couple semesters now, and you get to wander through that forest and find a topic that's interesting to you. Students made a tree of their interests. I am going to use Malisha's board game file tree because board games are cool. And so what we'll see here is Malisha has uploaded her zipped file tree from the previous exercise, and it is located here. This is a zipped directory. So this is a little bit unusual. Remember, we have files, and files live in directories. But we can make a special kind of file called a zipped file that compresses and packages up many directories and files into a single file that I can then download in one fell swoop. So I click the checkbox, and now I'm going to download it. Now you'll notice that when I do that, it brings up the download bar at the bottom. I can then click Show in Folder and I see my downloads directory with that downloaded zip file. And I'm splitting my screen here. And so I'm going to transfer my downloaded file tree from the downloads directory into CIT 100. 
and now I'm ready to continue with my steps. So let's take a peek. Now, step four asks you to uh, put this downloaded file tree into another subdirectory called expanded file trees. Let's make that directory now. I'm going to right click. Let's do the shortcut. So Control Shift N for Nancy will give you the prompt for a new folder. So this is expanded file trees. In CIT 100, we're going to follow good computing protocol, and we're not going to use spaces or strange characters in our directory or file names. And there we go. So now I want to, I'm going to move Malisha's zipped file into expanded file trees. I'm going to double click to navigate in there. Now I can't see all of Malisha's files and directories because they're all compressed up into a box. I need to open that box and I use a program called WinZip to unzip it. In some Windows distributions, the oops, excuse me, that was my cat. Um, in some Windows distributions, this is a program that's built in. In others, it's this quasi-free program called WinZip. It won't actually ever make you pay for it, but it'll make you think that you should pay for it at some point. You shouldn't. Um, so I'm going to say extract to here. So extracting means unpack the box and turn them back into normal. Um, ooh, look. It made me wait for a second. Um, so I can say use evaluation version. Yes, there we go. So uh, board games. So this is Malisha's file tree. That's cool. So you can see that within her root, her tree, her root tree is board games. And then within all of, or within that root, it branches off into a good chunk of directories. So we can see that multiplayer games include Life and Monopoly. And within each of those, there's actually these cool pictures. Let's look at the picture of Monopoly. Um, we can say, yes, open in photos. Delightful. And there's Monopoly. Bring back all those childhood memories. So our goal here is to continue building this because the fun thing about file trees is they make uh, adding to and composing more complicated structures easy because they stay organized. All right. So uh, let's jump back to our procedure. Um, so we just did this. We decompressed. We did number five. And now, as six says, you should see the actual directories. Then you can navigate and explore. Our first step is we want to say, okay, it, I, I think it's a tree, but how do I know it's a tree? It would be helpful if we could ask the computer to actually show us the picture of that tree um, using digital software. To do that, we are going to open the command prompt. Let's see if we can get an effect here. We're going to open the command prompt, the Windows command prompt. And uh, we find that by going to Windows, and I type in command prompt. All right. This looks a little scary for folks that have been only using clicks and mice to navigate their computer. What's important to realize is that this w is our legacy. This is our past. When uh, PCs were first distributed back in the 90s, this is what you saw when you turned on your computer. There were no uh, pretty sounds. There was no picture of a bright window uh, through some logo from the Microsoft Corporation. It was just this. So what was this? Well, it is a, uh, a file path. What we see is C colon backslash users backslash Eric D and then a forward caret. What this means is that this program, command prompt, is allowing us to run commands in a particular directory. What directory am I in? I'm in the Eric D directory, which is inside users, and the parent of this entire tree is the C drive. That's my hard drive. So I hope you have this open on your screen. So you don't have to look at my screencast. You can just listen to my voice. You can split your screen. Let's learn a couple of basic commands. So in order to uh, figure out what we want to do here, maybe we want to open a file or run a program, we want to see, well, what's available? What could we open? What could we run? And we type D-I-R, enter. That stands for directory. What that actually is doing is it's running a program that's called D-I-R. It gives us a directory listing. And what we see is it tells me that I'm in uh, drive C, and I am in the Eric D directory of the users directory in that, uh, in, that um, uh, in that drive, C drive. And this listing gives us some basic information of what's inside of Eric D. Um, 
this is the file type. And because directory is inside carrots, or dir is inside carrots, these are all individual directories, meaning they're containers for other directories and files. And in this case, there are no files. There are just directories. Now, I want to prove to you that this is not mysterious. So watch, I'm going to split my screen, and I'm going to put my um, friendly version over here. So take a peek at this. Um, I have on the right side of the screen, I have the Windows Explorer version of our computer's directory structure. And on the left side, I'm using the command prompt to navigate that. You should see some correspondence because we're viewing the exact same directory in two different programs, the old school command prompt and the new school graphic user interface version. And so I can see documents, documents, links, links, etc. My goal is to visualize Malisha's tree. Now let's, let's, um, let's help ourselves along. So I'm going to navigate these together. So notice how I navigated into documents. That's a double click. How do I do the equivalent over in the command prompt? I use a, a program or a command called CD. That stands for change directory. Now the way these programs work is you list the name of the program and then you hit space and then whatever comes after that space is an instruction to the program of something to do. Now in the case of CD, change directory, it's going to look for the name of a directory to change into. In this case, I want to go into documents. See that? So I'm going to start typing, it's ca capital sensitive, I'm going to type documents. So this says, hey, command prompt, I'd like to not be in Eric D. I would like to go into the directory called documents. So I say CD documents, enter. Nothing happened, but it did. It was very subtle. Notice that now I have a prompt, a, a cursor, that is inside documents. Now watch if I hit DIR. Again, this is running the program to say, well, what's inside the documents directory? And we can see, ooh, look. I can see the correspondence of the files on the right, the GUI, the graphic user interface, and the left, the command prompt. So there's a, a PowerSoft, that's the name of this screen recording program. There's CIT100, that's where we're trying to go. And I can see that a line that does not have DIR in carrots, that means it's a file. I mean, that doesn't contain other things, it is the, uh, the, the, um, the named chunk of bits on the computer that, you know, could be a, uh, this, in, in this case, it's a database program. This is, um, uh, this is another zipped folder. We can see that I downloaded another file tree, and this is the size. This is the size in bytes. Um, so we're trying to get into expanded file trees. So here's, I'm going to follow that same pattern again. I'm going to type CD, so change directory into uh, CIT100. Now I'm, I'm going to show you a, a, a tip, and that is I can only navigate into directories that actually exist. So if I type um, CIT and I accidentally type 110 instead of 100 and hit enter, it gives me an output. The program says the system cannot find the path specified. What does it mean by that? It means there's no directory CIT110 to go into. There's only a directory CIT100. One way to make sure that I don't make typos is I can ask the command prompt to try to find me a directory that is called whatever I start typing. So if I type CD space C and hit the tab key, the computer automatically searches through every available file or directory. Excuse me, it will just search through directories because this is the change directory command. I can say CD C tab and it will say, ah, there is only one match. There's only one possible directory to change into that starts with the letter C. So when I hit tab, it completes it. And I can hit enter, and I can be confident that that will effectively move me into the directory. Uh, so now I'm in CIT. Let's follow that same pattern. I'm going to see what's in it with DIR. Oh, look, it's another directory. It's exactly what we expected, expanded file trees. See how we're marching down? We are marching down the tree, and we can see our progress on the command prompt, CIT 100. So now I'm going to do another CD, expanded file trees, and hit enter. And now, if I hit DIR, look, this is Malicia's board game tree. This is the root of it.
it's right here. So what we're seeing in the command prompt is not only are uh, we can see that original zip file that I downloaded, it was 872,129 bytes, and, uh, and we have our directory of the board game trees. Now this is exciting. Now we can run a program called tree. Now let's just go ahead and do it. But tree, there's tree. Okay, that went by really fast. That program is super lickety split lightning fast because it's very simple. So I type tree and hit enter. I didn't need to type anything else. What the tree program does is it says, hmm, I'm supposed to do my thing. What do I do? It looks in whatever directory I type the command in and it finds any directory and it marches through that directory listing its structure. You're seeing lines like this. So this is cool because I can see the entire structure of Malicia's board games that's much harder to see over here on the graphic user interface side because I uh, have to look at only one level at a time. So notice how we're, we're thinking about nesting. So what I see over on the right, when I go in one level deeper into board games, I see abstract strategy, card, children's multiplayer. Notice how it works over on the tree. So I'm seeing this first level indent, abstract strategy, card, children's, etc. The checkers, chess, and connect four, those live inside their parent is abstract strategy. So I can only see those children when I jump into their parent. And now because my tree program didn't show me any children of checkers, when I click into that over in the uh, graphic explorer, I don't see any directories. I just see this file. But tree does not show us files. It only shows us directories. So this is kind of cool. So what the uh, tutorial is going to have you do is select this visualization of Malicia's tree. We do that by clicking and dragging on the command prompt window. This is a little bit odd feeling because we're not used to selecting uh, on a command prompt. But it's actually extremely simple. I click and drag and everything inverts the colors. So um, I'm selecting all this. Now to copy it into the clipboard, that's the place where everything stays until you paste it, I can do two things. I can use the mouse and I can right click the top bar and I can go to edit and then I can go to copy. Now notice in most programs, on most operating systems, the uh, keyboard shortcut for conducting that operation is listed next to the name of the um, operation. And that says enter. So I went and copied all of that. Now, oop, the selection disappeared. That's a little bit uh, disconcerting. Uh, it's not. It actually worked exactly how it is expected. Because now I can come in here and I can go to Microsoft Word. I bet it will tell me that Word has expired, that it wants my money. Mm. Let's go into Word, blank document. Oh, look, it's going to let me do it. So now I have a blank Word document, and I'm going to paste it. So I can either right-click and hit Paste, and there's my text that was copied from that command line. Notice it looks a little funny because it's just text. It's not an image. It's just characters. So I selected it, and I can go to No Spacing, and that shrinks it up. So I can now visualize that structure of Malicia's board game tree, and I can do so in Word where I have my text formatting options so I can highlight and so forth. So our goal now is to expand Malicia's tree and run this program again after we've added some content to her tree. So I could come back here and say, hmm, I like board games too. Can I build on any of Malicia's board game strategies? Uh, so I think about, hmm, are there any card games that Malicia did not put in here? Uh, so Rook, Rook, Solitaire, Uno. Um, how about poker? So I'm going to make a new folder called poker. I hit enter. And here I could say um, new Texas, uh, Texax, Texas Hold'em. I've actually never played Texas Hold'em. Uh, but that's beside the point. Maybe you have, and you could put in the rules for Texas Hold'em inside this directory, and I could learn. So I've made this structure. I can go online. I can put some content in there for yet future CIT 100 students to enjoy. And the goal here is to then see. Let's go back. So we're back in 
uh, command prompt, I have not changed directories. I'm still in CIT100 expanded file trees. I can just double check and always, I can always run DIR. DIR doesn't do anything, it just shows me what's in there. Okay, I'm still here. So if I run the tree command again, ooh, look. I can see that my directory that I created is now visualized by the tree program. Here is, I created a branch called poker, and I created a sub-branch called Texas Hold'em, and I uh, have effectively learned something about how file trees work. I can see that at its base level, there's, there's nothing uh, colorful. I mean, directories don't actually have little orange icons next to them. They're just containers inside an operating system for storing content and being able to navigate that is helpful. Now I'm going to wrap up this little video with showing you some navigation hints on the command line. So uh, I've shown you that you can go into directories with um, change directory and then typing the uh, first couple letters. So if I want to go into children's, let's see if it does lowercase. Nope, it has to be case sensitive. Ooh, uh, see, I couldn't get in there. Nothing was letting me in. Oh, because I need to go into board games. Okay, now this is interesting. When I did CD board games, if I didn't put it in quotation marks, uh, and I tried to type CD board games, uh, it's actually quite smart, so it was able to do that. But the reason we usually don't put spaces in directories is because a lot of computer people still navigate directory structures with the command line and having to type quotes board space games unquote that's a much bigger pain than just typing board games so you can see now I'm traversing the tree if I type dir I can see uh, the first set of children inside that and I can hit tree and I can see I'm one level in now I want to go see just this portion of the tree so if I hop into card the directory card is available. See, if I DIR, I can see card. I can now change directory into card. And now I can run tree. So now I just have a tiny little tree, right? Because I'm sitting on this branch. I'm sitting here on card. So when I run the tree program inside card, it's only showing me the subdirectories, poker, rook, solitaire, and then the subdirectory of poker. Um, if, for example, you get too far in the, in the file tree, you can type cd space and then two periods with no space between them. Notice I can see from the file path on the command line that I was in board game slash card, but then I changed the directory to the parent. Now I'm in only board games, and I can do this all day long. I can go all the way back, cd space dot dot. I can go all the way back to Eric D, and I'm back to where we started, and I can navigate back into that. Now you can uh, do this... Uh, you can navigate, you can jump several trees. So instead of doing it one directory at a time, I can say documents backslash. Um, now this is interesting. I can say documents uh, CIT100 backslash. Um, and now I just hit tab. When I hit tab inside CIT100, it saw that there's only one possible directory to go into. So it said, well, I guess that's where you want to go. And so I can hit enter, and I have jumped from Eric D all the way to expanded file trees, and, uh, and now I'm ready to roll. So that gives you an overview of how to run the command line. Don't be afraid of it. The command line is our friend because it follows commands very simply. Don't be afraid to type gobbledygook. You can't wreck stuff easily. Um, it'll just say, I don't know what that means. Um, I can say, who are you? You know, and it it uh, it's it's not very interactive. It only knows how to run commands that have been programmed into it. So that wraps it up for this particular module. Uh, I hope you enjoy making your trees. The particular details of how to format it uh, are all located here in the instructions. I give you some ideas about how to format the page with rulers and columns, and we'll learn a little bit more about how to make nicely formatted structured documents. And then you'll paste in the new tree, and you'll do some highlighting. So you'll come out with something that looks like this. We see old tree and expanded tree, and you upload that puppy, and you are set to roll. With that, I hope you have a pleasant day, and I'll catch you on the flip side.